हेलो सलाम शलोम नमस्ते सस्काल अलोहा ओला चाओ एंड बॉन्जर इट्स सो गुड टू बी विथ यू अगैन टुडे एंड आई एम श्योर यू विल बी वेरी हैप्पी यू आर जॉइनिंग मी टुडे बिकॉज वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट वालदास हु इज अ होलिस्टिक रिलेशनशिप कोच एंड स्पिरिचुअल गाइड मेंटर at celestial coaching services welcome thank you thank you thank you thank you for introducing me samia very good to be here <clears throat> i'm very happy to talk to your audience and to, to 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 the people that are listening to you so i will be here just to to answer your questions give my stories and to give massive value to people who are listening to us today yay i love that mm. can you start by just telling us a little bit more about who you are and what you do okay that's the story began when i was 19 years of age of course um of course 19 years of age was the was the period of time or the time when i met my spiritual teacher of course before life was continuing on its own and i was i felt that i'm a little bit different from my friends where i was growing you know but um the real thing started for me when i was 19 and before i had this very bad disease called eczema and i was looking for the natural ways to actually treat it and that's where life thrown me the opportunity and i met the person who actually completely changed my life over the next 4 years from my 19 years of age so because of that i continued on on my education on my spiritual education and spiritual growth and spiritual opening and i started with with Sri Aurobindo and Mother Yoga, which was called Integral Yoga, and then that lasted for 15 years of every single day work and every single day practice of what I was practicing, the stillness and meditation at that time, and really going deep into myself, really understanding what human being is and what it is to live this human life altogether. I was going deeper and deeper and deeper into it, to the point. where when i was already wanted to write a book about it six month from the from the from that conceptual moment it the information for me was a little bit too old already and i wouldn't dare to put it out for the people and so 10 years ago i've discovered something even more deeper within me i discovered source and center within me and that's how everything shifted in yet another moment <sighs> shifted in absolutely completely different way where new horizons has opened up for me and uh, living that way for the last 10 years inspired me to start sharing it actively to start sharing all that knowledge all that experience that i've got over those 30 years already of 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 spiritual path walking the path every single day share it with people so there will be more of those who discover the real core truth of the of themselves mm-hmm. and start living the real 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 life that is possible here on this planet regardless of where they are regardless of how they live everything is possible and they can change their life and live their life from deepest depths and from completely different perspective so that's what i'm about and that's what i'm teaching that's what i am coaching about about the real discovery of themselves mm. and living and creating life from that point i love that i i really do <clears throat> it's actually i wrote my first book a few years ago and um my book is the subtitle on that is how to create inner peace to world peace you know Wonderful. and i recognize that we have to start by getting to know ourselves and taking care of ourselves and cultivating that inner peace and that spirituality and then only can we begin to think about how am i going to change the world <laughs> you absolutely. know absolutely yeah absolutely that's, that's the real thing yeah to change mm-hmm. yourself first start from yourself and then and then you start building and you start changing the helping to other other people to change their lives but at the same time 
when you change yourself, when you go deeper into yourself, you are already one. You are not the one who is not changed, but you're becoming that change. And you are one more person towards a brighter life for all of us. Mm, that's so true. That is yeah. awesome. It, oh, tell me more. Tell me more. Uh, they, when, when you talk about discovering yourself, deepening your relationship with yourself, um, how do you understand that process? What does it look like? Uh, I mean, you mentioned a little bit about that already, but tell me more. Mm-hmm. Well, how does the process look like? It's actually, um, it's transition, it's a path, it's, it's, a, it's a process that goes from your, first of all, intellectual understanding of what is going on and going deeper into the being, into the feeling. And for many people, it's a different process because some people uh, find it intellectually first. They find, they want, they, they, they feel this need that, that they want to change because they feel that they are li- not living full life. They're not living fully. They are just experiencing something, but something deeper is missing. So for those people, they start searching for that deeper things and they go into the spirituality. For some others, it happens because of some kind of a shock. For example, a big divorce or, or some, some friend's death or, or some, some, something else when they start really thinking, what is, what is more? What is more about this life? And what is this more about me? What I'm doing here? And finally, everyone comes back to the same questions. Who I am? What I am doing here? Where I'm going? And what, what, what is this life all about? Why am I here? Why I'm here? And who I am? And that's the point where people start going deeper into spirituality, Mm. start going deeper into different processes. Some some start meditating, some start praying, some start different practices, but they do start somewhere, Mm. okay? But all all the processes begin with themselves when they finally become aware of their thoughts. They finally become aware of who they are, what they are thinking. And are they thoughts all together? Or they are something beyond the thoughts? Are they something or someone beyond the intellectual mind? Are they feelings or they're beyond their feelings? And then when people start discovering themselves deeper, and then they start establishing themselves outside of their body and start feeling that actually they are not the body, they are not even living in the body, but they are someone who used the body to actually create the experience and someone who is experiencing this life through this body and experiencing what it is to be a human being. Mm. That's, that's the process. Oh, that's so cool. So you just talked a little bit about like, when you think about who you are beyond your body. And then another really, uh, you highlighted a couple of other really uh, fundamental questions that people ask when they begin to delve deeper into themselves. So one was, who am I? And then the other was, what am I doing here? And what was the third third one? Where, where am I going? Where am I going? Yeah. So can you tell me more about like uh, what you have discovered about like what you're doing here, like from the spiritual perspective and where you are going from the deeper spiritual perspective? It's a very interesting question, you know, because for so many people, um, this question is kind of unanswerable because they are looking for some special, uh, for some special, special mission for themselves, I would say, yeah? They think that they are put on this earth to do some special mission or they're on this planet to influence someone else's life and they keep searching for that mission they keep searching for their own purpose and what that purpose is they keep searching but you see something that cannot be found i mean you you cannot find that something what does not really exist okay because in the beginning, we do not really have this kind of a special mission or we do not have this kind of a special reason for being here. But this initial life that we are here is basically to understand what it is to be this human being. Mm. 
to experience every single little moment of it, what it is to have children, what it is to bring up the children, what it is to be a teenager, what it is to be a child, what it is to be a student, what it is to experience any work that you do in this world. And that's, that's the main reason for what we are here. We are not really here for some special reason. And we cannot experience everything of this planet, but we definitely can experience what it is to be a human being and how to love and how to connect to source, how to fill yourself with love, how to share that love with others, how to be in the community of people and how to expand from just egoistic individual and grow out of your country, grow out of your nation, grow out of your race, grow out of the country, grow out of this world altogether and become someone real, true, spiritual person who does not belong here, but only get, lives this life and experiences this life as a human being at this particular form in this particular time. So probably that would be, that would be the, that would be the key things to understand for everyone. So not to search too much, but to really enjoy this moment and to really experience this human life from within and from without. Ah. Because that's all, that's all it is that required from us, really. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. I know for me, uh, what you're saying, I can relate to that because for a long time, I was searching for like what's my special purpose and then i realized at one point my heart just said you know the only real reason we're here is to learn is to just to love and be loved to just experience loving and being loved and that's it that's all we are here for i was like oh i like that i can i can do that and work on that just loving and being loved more and more yeah to be honest it's um, you know it's easy to say to to be loved and to love it's easy to say but this is a very deep process behind yes. everything there is a very very deep process to go through yes. you know so in order to be loving and to love um or to be loved you know you have to connect to source to center of love the source of that and to connect to source and center you have to change your vibration completely you have to really grow out into your spiritual self yeah. like not even spiritual self i'm using a little bit the wrong word but grow out into the spiritual nature uh -huh. to awaken that spiritual nature which then starts um, experiencing this life so basically you have to invoke something within you that will start experiencing a little bit different vibration where you will start seeing different angles of things where you will start seeing deep, different depths of things where intellect your feelings and um, your body become just an instrument or your mind becomes just an instrument of that you who becomes out of that vibration. And of course, mind does not change, just vibration of the mind changes. And with that different vibrational mind, you start seeing things in a much deeper way. And uh, you start feeling the connection between you and other people and, and between you and creator. So it's a quite a, quite a long process for some people. But of course, when, when, when they, if, if person is guided, it may happen a little bit faster. Mm. But uh, there is no shortcuts in spiritual, uh, spiritual path. And there is no spiritual theory because spirituality is always a practical. Mm. So building that relationship with yourself, building the relationship with creator, building relationship with other people, and with your life is a big process yeah it's a beautiful wonderful process i mean sometimes we struggle our way through it um but it's but it's life and it's like why we are here um because 
through that struggle is how we receive the learning and the growth that allows us to connect more deeply with the spread and the divine. Um, yeah. I, I was thinking, could you maybe give us an example of what it might look like for someone it, when they're considering or viewing life from, you know, just a perspective of their mind and physical body. And then when you have a deep, you have, when you have this deeper connection and these deeper realizations, um, how that, that issue or that thing begins to look different. So like a, just mm -hmm. like a example of that. Okay, okay. Okay, let me try, let me try and let me try and speak that to you. But before you also mentioned struggles. Yeah. Okay. You see, the struggle is a part of the process. You mm -hmm. cannot avoid them things. Struggle is a part of the process. Therefore, there is no even need to avoid it and think that when you pray or when you meditate or when you, uh, when you do the spiritual practice, then you are a good person. And when you're not doing it, it's not not good anymore everything is has to be integrated every single part of your life every single struggle every single problem is still your life open yeah. be open to it yeah be with it dive into it and yeah. never separate and never uh, never segregate it and never um never make it kind of yeah, never separate it. Just make sure you integrate it all, that everything is your life. A little bit of a struggle today, dive into it. And that's actually can flow into the next, into the answer to your next question about the process, you know, about the example of it. Because when you transition, when you transition into those spiritual realms, you become integrated person. Mm. suddenly and anything that you think you speak there is no there is no separation between your thoughts and your thinking and what you speak and there is no well integrity prevails in a way mm. because you are com you becoming completely open you becoming completely transparent and you can talk about your problems easily. You're not afraid that anyone would judge you. You are not afraid of any, any judgment from the outside because you know yourself well. You do not react to other people when they, when they judge you or when they say certain things that you do not agree. You do not react to it because you know yourself. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what they say about you, it doesn't change you. You still remain the same person and you still walk your personal path. And whether they tell you something wrong or something good about you, it doesn't change anything because you still have to live through your life. You still have to implement all these, all that wisdom that you gather from within into your life. You still take your pace. You do not run after someone or you do not look into the sides who is doing better or who is doing worse. You live your life again. You take your own pace. You take your own path. And you being interested within yourself more, interesting with, interested with you. And that's why I'm saying that you have to maintain this relationship with you. You have to kind of start relating to you who you are and start living your personal life. So these are the, these are kind of an aspect of spiritual life versus being reactive, being angry, being unhappy, being in controlled drama, uh, being in, in, in constant desperation or in depression or, or in anxiety, being unhappy, worrying what other people think about you this would be all about the lower mind about the lower mindset about this animalistic more mindset that we have yeah yeah so so that's where the transition happens between between the lower nature and the higher nature that's mm -hmm. how these two look like and that's what that's what i'm taking people through from this being this reactive to completely calm um, 
from being uh, from one who is looking around what others are doing to completely concentrating and focusing on your own life and uh, that's that's what i teach about those spiritual yeah. principles when, when i talk to, to people about the spiritual principles where if you act in one way you are in your higher nature if you act in different way then you are in your lower nature and right. all is in one and the same moment yeah you know what you were describing about when you're in your higher nature, then you're able to sort of, when someone says something bad to you or mistreats you, you're still able to remain calm and centered within yourself and, you know, just stay focused on living your life um, in general rather than getting caught up in um other people's drama uh that is like really really beautiful to me and i know that's something that i strive for in my life every day and one of the things that i oftentimes hear people when i express to them that this is what i'm striving for one of the things that people will often say to me is that that sounds to them like I'm saying that I don't care about other people anymore or that I don't want to care about other people anymore. Um, and they're like, you know, because how can you, how can you just remain calm if, if someone else is hurting and, you know, this or that, how could you just remain calm? It could only, like, it must mean that you don't care about that person. So how do you respond uh, to someone who has that perspective? Okay, very interesting question, Samia. Um, you see, it's a very wide question and it can be answered in, in two different segments. Okay. Uh, one of them is, is that personal, personal understanding when what people see they usually take it through the filters of themselves. Right. Okay. The filters of, uh, uh, of of certain beliefs, of certain emotions, of certain certain filters that actually formed very often in childhood, and they see reality distorted. Mm -hmm. They see the distorted reality instead of reality that they would really see what is really going on. Okay. So one of the ways to to see the world. Um, that when you are in your lower nature, you are reactive. You react in, into what you see is, is being wrong or being bad. Or for you obviously see that someone is right and someone is wrong in the way things move, okay? Like taking the war conflicts even, or taking, the, taking any conflicts, taking any problems in, in the world. But when you start really when you transition within you into reason, action, and consequence law, when you start really seeing why these things are happening, and what is the history of all that what's going on, and then when you start seeing all that situation where nations are in, where certain conflicts are happening between the people, you realize what is really going on. And then it's up to you, it's up, up, up to your compassion really, to go and separate them or try to make a peace between them. But very often, more peace can be achieved with a prayer. More peace can be achieved with a, not being with that, not, not being a part of that conflict or really praying about that conflict or really doing something about it that is not related to stopping war or conflict, but preventing the conflict preventing all that and the prevention usually happens is to bettering people when they become calmer when they are not able to take even the weapon or, or gun they are not able to do it because they cannot go and kill anyone or they are not able to shout on someone or insult someone because they're just not able to because they are too loving mm -hmm. that's where the prevention happens so the answer to people who see this harm that is happening in the world even right now with the wars and all these things, 
there is a very selfish world that we are living in. Indeed, there are very selfish people who just do not take, just do not care about people at all. You know, they're just caring about their own interests, about um, about making bigger profits, about making more money, to demonstrating their power. It's go, it goes even beyond the money because these days no one has to make any you know money. They can issue the digital money already, and those who issue those digital money, they don't care about it. They can print as many as you like, as as you want for 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 you. But what they want to demonstrate is their power, what they can do to the world. And then there are ambitions, and there are there are certain groups of people in the world who are actually fighting among each other. If talking about the global situation, okay, but if talking about the spiritual situations, you do care. You do not like the violence. You definitely do care, and you definitely do see who is suffering. But your help is to prevent it, to stop it, and to educate people so they wouldn't get involved into these things. So they wouldn't get involved into the drama. So they would stand for themselves in the spiritual way, building up themselves, getting a deeper relationship with themselves, really understanding who they are, and those interrogating and those who intimidating others, understanding that what is the reason behind those interrogations and intimidations, and it's usually fear, yeah. usually fear, okay? Yeah. So it's not true that we do not see and we do not feel anything for suffering. We feel even deeper. We mm. feel and we see it in, in at even even deeper level than just what the conflict is happening, because we see and we know what is truly going on, what is really going on, and that the answer to all these questions to stop this violence and to stop all these things, it's in the human nature, and that what has to be changed. Wars will not stop because someone from the outside will come and say that, look, wars has to be stopped. But wars will stop and the conflicts will stop when people start discovering themselves deeper, when people will start connecting to creator, when people will start caring about each other, loving each other, and will not be able to go to the, to, at someone with a gun will not even be able to understand why this gun all together, why it's created. What, what do I have to kill someone who is my brother or sister? Or we, do I have to go and beat someone for, for something? Mm. It becomes nonsense. Right. You cannot do this anymore. When you truly go deep into yourself and tru truly realize your spiritual divine nature, who you are, you start loving indeed, and you don't want to harm anyone. That is really awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think one of the last questions that I will ask you for today is, I know one of the things that you help people do is tap into their personal power and attract their ideal partner and lifestyle into their life. Ooh. And I know there's so many people who are looking for that ideal partner and wanting to have that ideal relationship. Uh, can you share us uh, with us a little bit about uh, your philosophy and how you go about helping people with that? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's 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 very important question to all of us because we are social beings and we would like we want to relate to someone we want to be with someone. We want to hug. We want to love. We want to touch hands. We want to, we want to be social all the time. And that's important. And people who say that they are happy being single, either they are upset with the previous relationship or they, they just not, 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 I mean, maybe they're not ready for, for that next step to become open, to become vulnerable and to become true who they are. But there is a lot of aspects to these relationship things. You know, there's a lot of aspects to it. And of course, I'm not judging anyone here by, by telling all those things because there are so many different situations in life and some people really genuinely seek the soulmate, seek that friend. But in the beginning, I would still say that you have to sort yourself out first because if you are vibrating the 
lack, if you are vibrating that drama or you want that or, or, or you have that drama in your life, or if you do not know yourself, or if you want to possess that person that is going to come into your life, meaning you're going to control them and you're going to ask them to do what you want them to do. Or on the other hand, you're going to please them and are going to dissolve in the relationship where you're going to lose yourself completely. And then you will be calling someone narcissist or you will be that, that the other person who is suffering, you know, this empath, people say, you know, I don't like to use really these terms. People just decided to, to call these people that, that way. If you have all these problems within yourself, what do you think you're going to attract? You're going to attract exactly the same person that you have in previous relationship if you had one because you did not change anything your vibration will attract exactly the same person so you have to start from yourself and not to pretend that you have changed but really make a fundamental change within you really create a transformation within you where you are no longer able to think the ways you've been thinking before when you had had certain partner <clears throat> For the young people, I would like to say, if they're, if, you know, they're looking for a relationship and they're looking for to create in the family, very important thing is that they would feel good all the time, that they would be prepared for it. And I know that school does not teach how to be in the relationship. School does not teach how to, um, how to find that soulmate. School does not teach anything about it. For some reason, we have to figure it out ourselves even though it would be fantastic that there would be disciplines and qualified people would be explaining about how to choose your partner and what to look for. And I always say, don't look to dissolve into someone, but look for someone to walk the life together where you value each other, where you respect each other, where you even respect each other's space, respect each other's free will, respect each other's talents that they have to be developed where the conscious relationship happen where you want to give your best to this relationship and not to give something best but be your best constantly developing yourself constantly growing to be the best version of you and that applies to both partners not one is waiting while the other will change but both are trying to achieve their next version and 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 kind of a live life more fulfilled and grow together into into that oneness but also remembering that you're living your own life and you have to separate a little bit and give each other space and do not own each other because as soon as you start owning each other you start pushing each other and then you want to attract each other again and then you push yourself you push each other again and this continues and you keep suffering which is not necessary when you really love when you fill yourself with love from creator and you emanate that energy to your partner of course that's ideal scenario what i'm talking about but when you really there is another aspect to it, if I may say, we have a couple of minutes time. There is another beautiful aspect to it that um, you do not have to go looking for that person because when you look for someone, it means you don't have it, okay? It means you feel lack within yourself. And once you feel that lack within yourself, you will attract more lack. You will attract more of that what you feel. So find the ways to feel inclusive, find the ways to feel whole, find the ways to feel integrated, to feel happy, to feel lucky, to enjoy this beautiful life. And then from that joy, from that happiness, from that love, you will attract the person who will create more of it for you in life. Regardless, this person, another person, or third person, then, or, or the other partner, you will feel joyful because you are already joyful mm -hmm. and you cannot attract anyone that creates you any problem yeah i love that i love that and that is a wonderful note a wonderful teaching lesson for us to wrap up the day today but thank you so much for joining us today and sharing all your wonderful wisdom 
I really, really appreciate it. And we'll probably need to bring you back because <laughs> you have, I'm sure, so much more to share and talk about. So thank you. Any last words for today? Um, the any last word, of course, there is tons of things to say. There is tons of things to explore. But just if someone is wanting to find me or if someone wants to, wants to explore more or ask certain questions and know how to work with me maybe or how to just interact, I'm, on, I'm available on Facebook. And my name is Valdas Pranskavichus. You probably will see me there. You will find me. Or you can simply ap ap approach Sami and she will, she will direct. She will direct you to myself. We, we will add your links uh, in the show notes and in the captions under the video and the audio that we post with this interview. So people will be able to get in touch with you directly. I'll also post my information there. Fantastic. They can get in touch with me if they want to. And uh, yeah, with that, I just want to say until we meet next time, Go ahead. I will probably say a few more things. Sure. I just also would like to not not to end on the on the note that you know meet me or, or walk with me or, or see me, but on the note that take your life into your hands, take your life into your hands, grow spiritually, know yourself well, mm -hmm. and that's what I really wish everyone to fill themselves with love, to discover themselves deeper, because. I'm not, uh, I am about, about the mission to help more people to discover themselves, to help more people to grow within, them, within themselves. So this world will be a much more happier place to be. Yes. Awesome. So let us all strive to create that happier place and start with ourselves. And until next time, I wish you lots and lots of peace and joy. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Samia. And it was great talking to you today. Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, this episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back? from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samya Vano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes.